Hello, and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. This is week 5, segment 9, and in this video we'll take a look at how we can use the GNU debugger GDB to inspect a running program and observe what's going on while it is executing. Let's dive right in. Here, let's pick up right where we left off. We use the simple ls program from our last video and try to resolve the segmentation fault we encountered in our test directory. Running the command in this directory works just fine, but it fails in the other directory. So how do we go about identifying the cause of this sec fault? Let's compile the code with a dash g flag, which enables debugging symbols. Once we've done that, we can now run gdb a.out to start the debugger. The debugger gives us an interactive prompt from where we can run commands. Use help to get more information and dig into the different capabilities, such as breakpoints, examining the stack or variables, etc. To run the program, we type run, followed by any command line arguments to the program. Now, the program executes within the debugger. And when that sec falls over here, we notice immediately that the debugger tells us exactly where the error occurred. In the function print owner in the file simplelist.c on line 22. That alone is perhaps the killer feature of a debugger. Rather than trying to run through the code and adding printf still alive here and there, we now know the exact location where the problem is. We also see the arguments with which this function was called when the program crashed, and we can look at the code in question by using the list command. List shows us the code at and around the line where the error occurred, and we see that what happened here in this printf statement. But now we can use gdb to give us even more information. We can inspect the value of a variable name at the time of the crash which was no owner. By the way, GDB lets you be lazy and type abbreviations for any command, so we can use p name instead of print name. Now let's print the second argument to printf. Hmm, that didn't work. What's pwd? Okay, so it's a struct password pointer but it's 0x0, zero zero, or null. Now that's exactly why we segfaulted here. Get PW UID returned null, and we try to dereference and then print something from null. That's not going to fly. Hmm, why would get PW UID return null? Let's look at the manual page. It returns a valid struct password on success, and null if the entry wasn't found. Let's go back into the debugger. Where were we? Here, let's get the backtrace of the stack by running bt. Main called print owner, and we failed on line 22. So let's look at that again. So get pwuid returned null. I wonder why. One of the cool things about GDB is that we can now actually call functions and see what they would return. Let's see what get pwuid says. Oh, okay, we have to specify the return type. That's pointer to struct password. And if we pass in zero as the argument, we get back a pointer to a struct password at that memory address here. We can try to print the value the call had returned. And then reference any of the members of the struct and get back root. That makes sense. We hold called get pw uid with an argument of zero and uid0 maps to the user root. But in the program, 
we had passed an STU ID from the struct stat for the file in question. What was that value? Let's inspect it. There. That UID is 1234. So if we now call get PW UID 1234, we get back null. There is no user with this UID. So we can't just make the call to get PW UID and then move on to use the resulting struct password. As I keep stressing, the return value of any function that could fail needs to be checked. So let's do that. Since we know that this call might fail, we'll change our code to the common pattern of if function fails, then else, and have the program print a numeric UID if it can't look up the username which is incidentally exactly what the ls command does when it encounters a file with an stuid that doesn't map to a username and let's see password. Otherwise, we print the name. Okay, let's see if that did the trick. Compile and run and there we are. The file no owner is now displayed as having the STUID instead of an owner name. We have successfully debugged our first program. Before we go on to debug our next program, let's quickly summarize what we've learned in this example alone. In order to see what is going on inside a program while it executes, what it was doing at that moment it crashed, we can use the debugger like GDB. To do that, we need to enable debugging symbols via the dash G flag to the compiler. One of the killer features of a debugger is its ability to point you to the exact location in the code where it crashed. This includes the function name and its arguments, the file name and the line number. You no longer have to guess or add printf statements to see where your code failed. Your debugger will point you right to the place you messed up. If you take away nothing else from these videos, I hope that you remember this. If your program sag faults, run it in the debugger and it will tell you where the problem is. But the debugger can do quite a bit more. For example, we saw that we can inspect the value of variables inside the running program and even call functions and inspect their return values. That can be quite useful. In our next video, we'll build on top of this basic functionality and discuss how we can step through a running program. And we'll fix our flawed Fibonacci program from the last video, so make sure to tune in again. Until then, thanks for watching. Cheers!